Hello everyone! Today I'm making this video together with Yang Mao Zedong. I'm right now in a city of Changsha, Hunan province. This is a province where he was born. In this city, Changsha, he was going to university and spending his young age. Uh, that's why we see such a huge statue of himself here. I'm sorry I'm wearing glasses because the sun is killing me and I'm shouting right now in a microphone just to overshout the, all the patriots who are gathered today to make a photo with this person. Uh, so yeah, uh, right now I'm in an orange island, which is a little island inside of a river which crosses the Changsha city. And we are going to explore the island and the city together. Let's see what we can find here. Not so much actually. So let's go. I hope you will like this video. So already a second time I see something looking like this. I don't know what's the purpose of that thing. Maybe just for photos. So there you see the river and there is a river again. So this island is very narrow but long. Here as well you can have a pleasant walk along the river. Here also some flowers, some blossom. On this island you can find not only historical site but also restaurants. This is French restaurant and then Pizza Hut and Lavazza coffee shop. This is something which surprised me because most of the time in China on such let's say very patriotic sites you would never find anything like westernized. On this island you can travel by such little trains which are taking you to stops. In China you see Mao Zedong statues everywhere and he is also present on all Chinese uh, banknotes. Uh, most of the time when I'm talking to Chinese people and asking about uh, Mao Zedong, it looks like they really, let's say, admire him. Uh, but if I'm talking to very high educated people like professors in a university, just people who are having high positions, uh, if you ask them, most of the time they will like make a face and say I'd rather not to talk about that. And later, after doing some more detailed research about his policies and what he was doing during his time, I understood why educated Chinese people have such a um, reaction. So I think everyone can make their own uh, conclusions. In the 19th century, uh, on this island, there were lots of foreign embassies. So that's why sometimes you can see on this island something looks like in a Western style. Well, on the internet, they say that this is the area for swimming. And seeing the obstacles, I understand that yes, this area is for swimming, but all over view doesn't give me a desire to swim here and yeah Mazudun also loves to swim here all right now i see so the maximum what you can do here is take such a transport i even don't know how to call it and ride it there so boring this is how chansha meets me i saw already so many buildings like this they look like very old probably having some historical value but I don't know why they're abandoned and what they're gonna to do with them maybe everything must be destroyed and then this area will be mm, given for skyscrapers every time when I'm walking I'm able to find this kind of little streets which all the time remind me of Hong Kong I'm already a bit surprised by the number of such tall buildings here in Changsha, which have been built not five years ago, because most of the time when you see such tall buildings in China, they are new built, not an old one. Changsha sometimes is called like Chinese Chicago. I've never been in Chicago, but I can confirm that they have a really tall building, even those buildings which have been built long time ago. As in all Chinese cities, you can find this kind of scenery where you see the river and the skyscrapers on another side of the river. But in Changsha, you also see a big island 
in the middle of the river and this is called Tangerine Island and we will go there tomorrow this is something interesting I see even people swimming in this river and you have access to the water so close this is really something surprising for me because you would never see anything like this in Shanghai or other big cities like Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen because all the time they are caring about your safety sometimes even too much uh, but I already a long time ago realized that everything what is outside of big cities um, people really more free and maybe nobody is caring about their uh, safety but as a result people as from my own experience people who've been born in our cities uh, or grew up in our cities they more practical they really know how to handle themselves than those people whom I see in Shanghai sometimes really don't know how how to manage simple things because during enti their entire life they were taken care of too much Another surprising thing is that I see so many children on the streets, like children who just come in after school. Because in Shanghai you really don't see stu school students on the streets, because primary school and middle school, they must be taken from school by parents or grandparents, while the high school are must go home from school to home by bus. So you really don't see on the streets simple children coming back from home. While here already even saw middle school children by themselves going home from school. This is a normal street in Changsha. I really feel those two extra millions of population here compared to Nanchuan. <laughs> from my window I see the school and how the students are running every morning and they are shouting something but I don't hear what exactly. Probably something in a good body, strong health, communist party and all other stuff. But then there are some students who are walking on the floors or for some reasons do not run. So yeah, this is the morning of Chinese students. Yesterday during the day I went out from that uh, subway, I just arrived to the city and from the first look at the city I say, hmm, it somehow reminds Tokyo or Osaka and now seeing this in a night, night light, I, I say this again, it really looks a bit like Tokyo or Osaka. I'm just walking on the street and it's Thursday night, I guess, I, I don't remember, when I'm traveling I can be easily lost in dates. Here is it just close. Oh, what the heck? Such surface of the road is not really popular in China, by the way. If you're curious what all of these little shops with so much lights, 99% it's about food, because Changsha is also famous for food. Oh wow, they're really slow. <laughs> and I miss so much this style, then people just sit on the plastic chairs in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There was such light in Shanghai a long time ago, but now it's gone because Shanghai is too fancy.
To be honest, the smell in such places is not really good because they use they reuse the oil on which they fry and they use it a lot and it, then it burns, it really smells bad. Here I came to a very unusual and super interesting place. It was kind of an abundant building inside of shopping mall. And as you see, everything was painted, lots of graffitis on the walls. Basically, it was a place for foodies, lots of restaurants and some souvenir shops. So people are coming here to have their dinner and make photos, lots of photos, because, you know, Chinese girls especially, they love making photos. But as you see, it looks like you're in a yard of the building, but at the same time, you're actually inside of a building. Of course, lots of people. Because it's so easy to get lost there, there were even few volunteers who were helping you to go and find the restaurant where you booked a table for tonight. The thing I really like is those stairs. As you see, you cannot understand on which floor you are right now. Is it the first floor or it's already the third floor? And it looks a bit like in Hogwarts. And even there was a little cabin car to get from one part of the place to another. Later I found this cute library or bookshop and of course you can sit next to it and have your dinner and this is what I did the next day after that. On the next day, I ordered myself chansha noodles, they were cold, with some nuts, actually tasted nice, and four fried bananas, some water, and as you see, yeah, I was sitting just next to the bookstore. First time in my life, I ordered myself chansha noodles, and they were cold. Our country is but first try, first time trying here in Tap Tap. So it's really tasty and sweet, but I don't know what is here. Like banana, banana is sweet, and something yellow. I hope it's not the butter or oil. Maybe it's honey. Ah, uh -huh, I also got the lemon. So yeah, it's it's really nice, but I don't know what is it. <laughs> I've got my lamp and please <laughs> look at the number of these red spices and it must be super spicy. No, it's not spicy. All right. So if you will be in Changsha city, I highly recommend you to come to this place, it's so interesting. This room looks just like a concert hall inside of my school and I bet the Chinese schools have the same type of concert halls. Here run into a little cute bar. Most of all, I liked this wall with radio tape recorders. So cool. I mean, I've seen a lot of things while I was traveling around, but this place, it's something really new. First time I'm seeing such a concept of a, like abundant place and inside of it so many restaurants and how well they all assembled like truly respected these guys as in all other smaller chinese cities the traffic was crazy people literally drive as they want and every time they were driving on me 
here I decided to walk on the main pedestrian street of the city, which looks just the same as in all our Chinese cities. When I say to my friends that I'm gonna be in Changsha, they all were saying, Oh my god, you have to try that food and that food. They said, you have to try the one specific tea. It's called sexy tea in English, but in Chinese I didn't pay attention. And all right, I, I saw that this tea place is written on every corner. I saw huge lines, people really queuing for this tea for hours. And since it's already pretty late, and I saw there was one spot there were like just few people, so I went there, I ordered the tea. And this is the jasmine tea with uh, coconut water. I mean, yeah, it's tasty, it's good, it's fine. But hearing from friends that they plan to go to Changsha only because of this tea, which cost 12 renminbi, two dollars. For me, it's like, it's just tea. And you can find this kind of tea spots everywhere and they're so different and you can develop your tea by yourself and add inside everything what you want. So why bother yourself that much just for a tea? I, I really don't understand. Like some of my friends were saying they planned our trip to go to Changsha just for this tea. They go not for sightseeing, not for uh, uh, some historical places, they go for tea. And good morning from the train station. I didn't make a normal video somewhere of the beautiful sightseeing behind me. But yeah, this is the train station. All of them look almost the same in China. They are huge, clean and I think beautiful. Uh, yeah, so this, this is was Changsha city. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Right now I'm going to Guiyan city and uh, I I don't know anything about it. I just know that it has lots of beautiful mountains around. Uh, yeah, likes, comments, and our stuff. Thank you for watching. Bye.